Welcome to the Grants Pass Center for Spiritual Living. I'm Reverend Steve Van Meter, your senior minister. It's so good to welcome you here today. I'm so glad you've joined us. We've been expecting you. We know you have a lot of different places you could tune in for a service, and you found us, and we're so glad that we found you. Blessings. Well, this is the Grants Pass Center for Spiritual Living, and I'd like to invite you to hear our mission, mission statement, which states, Grants Pass Center for Spiritual Living is an open, loving, spiritual community dedicated to evolving consciousness through teaching spiritual principles. This morning, we are so happy to have a guest speaker with us. Nan Bankston, practitioner, board president, also ministerial student, will be providing the talk for this morning. But for now, I would like to take you into our announcements. A big thank you to our spiritual gardeners and lawn crew. They're taking care of our grounds with loving care and attention, and we are so blessed to have them because although we are not here, the grass is still here and growing, and it needs to be clipped and maintained, and, and we're so blessed to have them doing that. Weekly prayer and meditation, Zoom meeting, hosted by me, Reverend Steve, and Nan Bankston, and this is happening every Wednesday morning at 9 a.m. The room is open at 845, so people can come and visit for a few minutes just before the spiritual vitamin begins right at 9 o'clock, so come join us. There is a link in the newsletter for that Zoom time. The bookstore is closed until further notice, but don't worry, Nancy Yi board secretary will mail the May Science of Mind magazines to anyone who usually gets one from the bookstore. Just contact Nancy. Her information and instructions are in your e-newsletter. If you don't, don't get the e-newsletter, you can call Nancy Yi at 541-441-0700. For details. Once again, 541-441-0714 to talk to Nancy Yee about your magazine. Treatment and meditation class will begin Thursday, May 7th from 1 to 4 p.m. and will continue through July 9th. Contact Karen Jordan for information regarding registration and class particulars. Her number is 541-761-2107. And that's for Karen Jordan. More information is in the e-news also. And this is a prerequisite for anyone entering the Practitioner One studies. So if you are planning on doing that, I urge you to take this class. Thank you to everyone who participated in the Grants Pass Center for Spiritual Living Practitioner unexpected income program. This program was scheduled to run January through March of 2020. We experienced an interruption with the COVID-19 restrictions. If you have any unexpected income that's uh, left over or still rolling in, these ties um, can still be sent in to the center at the address that is in your unexpected income program. We at our center are so blessed by everyone's participation and givingness of spirit, prosperity, love, and generosity. When we convene again in person, the practitioners will share the total amount received and where the practitioners will tithe from this abundance. God is good all the time. Thank you again for everyone for joining in this adventure. Much gratitude and huge love and big hugs from your Grants Pass Center for Spiritual Living practitioners. And now it's time to ring the gong. So I'll meet you at the gong.
it's now time to sing We Are One. Treasure, Dave, take it away. Thank you for that. Please join me in the reading of today's gratitude that's in your newsletter. I give thanks knowing I am always connected to the divine and my divine purpose. So we've switched things around a little bit in our order of service, but just follow me. Please join me in reading today's prayer that's in your newsletter. I renew my life's purpose today and every day by allowing the fire in my belly to guide what's mine to do. And so it is. And now it's time for I Am Loved. Treasure, Dave. So it's time for us to come together for a brief meditation. So I just invite you to bring yourself to center. I'd like to speak a little bit today about what's called the technique and the fire. This is actually taken from our Science of Mind Foundations class that talks about how to do prayer treatment. There is a technique for spiritual mind treatment that can be taught, and there is something vital to a treatment that cannot be taught. That which can be taught are the five steps of spiritual mind treatment, scientific prayer. That which cannot be taught is your own identification with the center and the source of your own being. This is a felt sense that you must discover and foster within yourself through continuous awareness of the presence that surrounds and indwells you. It is the fire that you feel within yourself that fuels your knowing the truth of spirit as your source and substance in life. The spiritual practice taught in Science of Mind are here for you to nurture 
your ability to access the fire of life that resides within you. Practice and implement them as they will assist you in enriching your own sense of knowing and experiencing the truth. And so it is. So I urge you to close your eyes if that's comfortable for you right now or take a soft focus on something, but let's take a moment to go into the silence and connect. good it is to remember who we are and connect with that fire in the belly. So at this time, we are going to have some beautiful music by Treja and Dave, and then our featured speaker today, Nan Bankston. Stand for 
Well, hello, everybody. How are you today? I don't know if you're watching this on Saturday night before or during or after dinner. I don't know if you're watching it Sunday. It really doesn't matter. You're here, and I am so happy to be with you. It's been a long time since I've been given the privilege of speaking with you and sharing a message, so I am so excited I can't tell you. And thank you for the beautiful song, Treasure. It's, it's perfect for our message today. You know, I look out into this sanctuary, and even though you aren't here physically, I can feel your energy, I can see your smiles, and I know that we are connected through that web of spirit love that unites us all the time, always, forever and ever. So it's just my privilege and, and joy today to give you a message that's the concluding chapter of our April talk series. April's theme was Bright Beginnings, and it ends today with Divine Purpose, Fire in the Belly. And so that's the name of my talk today, Your Divine Purpose and Fire in the Belly. And when I first started to contemplate today's message, we were not in the midst of a pandemic and quarantined for safety. I had had a lot of lofty ideas about divine purpose and fire in the belly. I was all, I had been studying uh, spirituality in the brain in ministerial school and oh, I was all fired up. I was fired up with how our brains work and when we meditate and pray and use other spiritual practices, what happened and I thought, oh, this is gonna be really good because I can do fire in the belly from that perspective. And then along came COVID-19. The center was closed. And myself, as well as all of you, had a lot of time to contemplate some different perspectives on divine purpose. So I had to ask myself, what was the divine purpose of this viral infection that seemingly came from nowhere? You know, if everything is God, then this too had to be God. I wondered what its purpose was in appearing right now in this time. I had watched news reports. I watched the rampant spread through Wuhan, across other countries, Seattle. And you know, Seattle isn't that far as the crow flies from here. That was just a little too close to home. I questioned what could possibly be a divine purpose in this living protein that was now systematically sickening and ending lives of so many people around the world. It wasn't in any one spot. It was everywhere. It didn't make a lot of sense to me, but again, I knew that this too was God and that God's always good. And so in this regard, there had to be blessings. And so I turned to the one thing I knew I could trust. And that was our science of mind teachings with all the spiritual principles that we can fall back on and turn to. When Dr. Ernest Holmes birthed religious science, he had a huge respect for science and spirituality coming together in a perfect alignment. In fact, he said that the laws of science were evidence of the systematic intelligence of the universe and that science of mind is the study of life and the nature of the laws of thought, the conception that we live in a spiritual universe that God is in, through, around, and for us. So as days in isolation went by and people stayed home, planes stopped flying, cars stopped filling highways and city streets, businesses and cities slowed to a grinding halt. 
I began to realize that perhaps the purpose of this mutant virus was to simply stop everything. It was just to stop everything, to put life as we knew it on hold. Perhaps, perhaps it was a divine intervention to give each of us time to ponder our purpose and the kind of world we would like to create after COVID-19 has stabilized. A world that would work for everyone and for all creation. You know, as I watch the news now, I see cities that have never seen blue skies for months and years and weeks. The smog has dissipated. I don't know if you saw the mountains of the Himalayas, all clear with beautiful blue sky and snow crest showing and gleaming for the first time in years. So perhaps, perhaps this was the chance to reset everything. Well, now you know, how does that all fit in with divine purpose and fire in the belly? Well, you know how I like my words. You know, I love to know what those words mean. So I looked again at the word purpose. And as a noun, purpose is the reason for which something is done or created or for which something exists. As a verb, it means to have an intention or objective. So the noun purpose is a foundation, a reason. And the verb purpose is a call to action. Interesting, huh? Purpose as a reason for our existence is simple. Our simply being alive, our very existence here, is proof that we are here to do our good, to bring our gifts to the world. We are unique emanations of spirit, and that spirit directs us and our purpose. Dr. Holmes writes, consider the spirit as a warm, pulsating, reciprocal thing. It presses against us. It flows through us. It is our intelligence. It is a great universal urge and surge, that fire that Reverend Stephen talked about in the, the fire and treatment. It is a warm, colorful thing. It is a beautiful thing. It cannot be put into words. You can only feel it. Know that there is something more than law by that feeling. And an intelligence to which we may come for inspiration, for guidance, for direction. A power responding to us. A presence pressing against us an animation flowing through us, a knower of our unique divine purpose. Now, Judge Thomas Troward was one of Ernest Holmes' great influences and teachers. And Thomas Troward said that the purpose of life is to more fully enjoy life every moment. Think about that for a moment. Just think about that. The universal reason we are here, the purpose for our existence, is to enjoy life more fully every minute. And as we enjoy life, spirit experiences that enjoyment through us. That's the purpose of our emanation from spirit, so that spirit can experience life through us in all the joy and beauty and wonder. In many ways around the globe, this pause in time has offered people a chance to slow down, reconnect, spend more time with nature, spend more time and connect with the families that they didn't have time for before spend more time and to be able to fully enjoy the life that before had been speeding by in the course of a day, hardly noticeable, the life around us, the beauty, the wonder, the awe. We just moved through the flurry of things that had to get done and when the day was over we knew there was still another list to wait for the next day. Now purpose as a verb 
a call to action, summons us to realize we are always connected to the divine. And everything that we do is contributing in some way as we show up as God in this world. Treasure saying, use me, use me. What a beautiful song. I have these words from Dr. Sheila Patel. She's a physician in New York who's working right now through this medical crisis. And she wrote this, and I think it's very pertinent as we think about purpose. More important than anything else is connecting with that inner drive that keeps me moving forward despite fatigue or the threat of illness. And that is purpose. Purpose is an integral pillar to well-being. During times of strife or calm, it's a pillar for well-being. For healthcare workers reconnecting to our sense of purpose, reconnecting to our sense of purpose helps us through the toughest times. It provides us with energy, courage, and the emotional strength that we need to move forward, allowing us to act from a place of the spirit and overcome our fears. That's a powerful statement at this time. I would, add that, I would add that for spiritual beings, purpose provides us with that same energy and power. It helps us turn away from the fearfulness of the world. And that, my friends, is where the fire in the belly comes in. Yes, that fire in the belly. Mm -hmm. And just what is that? You know, we talk about fire and technique and treatment. We talk about fire and belly and the purpose. So just what is it? Well, Reverend Kevin and his wife were having dinner with their eight-year-old son, Alex. And Rev. Kevin was discussing this very topic that was going to be his Sunday message with his wife and wanting to be a really good dad and include his son in the conversation. He turned to Kevin, he turned to Alex rather, and he asked him what he thought fire in the belly was. Well, little Alex never missed a blink of the eye, and he just said, well, that's what I get whenever mom makes meatloaf. Well, meatloaf, unlike meatloaf, the dictionary describes fire in the belly in this way. If you have fire in your belly, you are ready to do something in a very energetic and passionate way. And maybe that's where some of the confusion about divine purpose and fire in the belly occurs. We sometimes think that we have to be superstars. We have to make some amazing, incredible contribution to the entire world to have value and purpose. We should be Mother Teresa's or Gandhi's or individuals who have changed the world, the Rosa Parks, the current people in this crisis that are doing things to change the world for a better place every day. Big, big activities. Big activities. Well, we don't need to chase a life of purpose to be worthy of living this life. We are not devoid of purpose if we are not contributing in some huge, demonstrable way. We are living our divine purpose because we are always divine beings just showing up every day. And we use the fire in our belly to feel passion and energy to make choices about how we choose to live our lives and show up. We are in choice every day to be our best and do our best as beings contributing and showing up in the world as God. Thomas Troward encouraged us to achieve a greater degree of livingness through becoming spiritual beings, choosing to more fully embody the qualities of spirit, to show up in the world as God. Well, let's consider those qualities right now. You've heard me talk about them before if you've ever heard any of my other talks. And those are life and light and love and power and peace and beauty and joy. 
The good news is we don't have to run around the house looking under couch cushions and pillows or furniture or in the closets to be able to find our inspired divine purpose. The simplest thing to do is to consider the qualities of spirit, open to the inspiration of the divine, and invite spirit to use us, as the song said. Just for now, I invite us to simply sit back and relax as I speak the qualities of spirit again in a format that Judge Troward put together that he called absolute treatment. And he believed that by using this prayer every day, he would embody all the qualities of spirit and live life as a spiritual being and have a greater livingness and joy in life. So just take a moment to turn within and see which one stirs that fire in your belly. Just take a moment to pause within. And this is what Judge Troward wrote. I am life, and as life I do flow. I am love, I reap what I sow. I am light, I eternally glow. I am power, so I can let go. I am peace, I know that I know. I am beauty, I watch myself grow. I am joy, above and below. Which of these qualities inspired that fire in your belly? Which of these qualities brought up that divine essence, that God within you? Which brought forth that flood of warmth of spirit rising up within you? Have you got it? Have you got it? Well, now bring it back here. Maybe, maybe as you come back to this time and space, maybe there's more than one that lit that fire. And what happens if you mix them together? Whoa, you may have a volcano going on in there just shooting all over. What kind of inspiration is spirit providing you in living your purpose? All we have to do is turn within to know. It's not a secret. I'd like to close with more thoughts from Dr. Patel. Might help you consider your purpose also. She says, in our current state of social distancing, it's the perfect time to reflect on your life's purpose by asking yourself three questions. What natural talents do I have? What brings me joy? And how can I use these talents to bring joy to others at this moment in time? It's not a contract that you have to bring joy every minute for the rest of your life. But what could you do to bring joy to others right in this moment? A good place to start is meditation, she says. A regular meditation practice can help you discover your unique talents whether it's fixing things, making people laugh, cooking, or creating virtual community, and using your talents to then help others will naturally help you find meaning and purpose in these challenging times. So I invite all of us to use this time to relax into spiritual practices, meditation, prayer, our spiritual mind treatment, visioning, contemplation, walking in nature, just sitting outside and hearing the life of spring living around us. There's God, a lot of God out there in everything right now. 
take a look at it. And that may just spark your divine purpose. As the song said, let us invite spirit to command our hands, to open our hearts, to command our very lives. And most of all, welcome spirit to light the fire in our bellies, to more fully enjoy the livingness of life in every moment. I invite you now to savor your inherent divinity as the purpose of your life and the fire in your belly. And so it is. So we'll just take a moment just allow these thoughts to anchor into the presence of the divine within. So I call to mind that one infinite loving presence, that warm, pulsing insurgence of beauty and joy and light and life and wonder. I invite each of you, each of us, to bring to mind that presence that we know, that presence that loves us, that presence that only knows good for us and with us and through us, and that is us. And in this moment, as I speak this word, I speak a word of life for all creation. I speak a word of light and illumination around this beautiful planet we inhabit. I work I speak a word of love that lifts up every heart and soul to move through the challenges and know the blessings, the gifts of spirit that are in every moment. I speak a word of power for all people to rise up together, for all people to rise up and hold hands, even if it's from a distance. And I speak a word of peace in that unity. I speak a word of peace in that unity of one life. And I speak a word of beauty as a new world comes to be born through that harmony of the love of one. And I speak a word of joy as all things are made new through that one spirit that one creative essence that exists in, through, and all creation. For everything, all peoples, all creatures, all living things to be in peace, harmony, and joy. And so knowing, knowing that wherever anyone is who has spoken a prayer, those prayers are being answered right now. They always are. Every prayer spoken is answered. And so I know too that as I speak these words, my heart is filled with gratitude knowing that indeed this too is good. This too is God. And all the blessings continue to be revealed and enjoyed by all in this time. And I am so grateful. And now I just release this into the living, loving law of mind that has already said yes. Yes, my beloveds. Yes. And we can anchor this together by saying, and so it is. Amen. Thank you so much for the time with me today. And you know, if you're hanging around and you feel like dancing, just go back to the beginning of the video and you can do a little boot scooting across your kitchen floor with your favorite person that you're stuck in isolation with. It might just break the tension. Just keep dancing because we will dance our way through this. And so now it's time for us to do our prosperity affirmation. I give freely from my divine purpose knowing I am abundantly prospered. And if you'd like to take your gift and put it on your heart before you put it in the envelope and send it, 
or before you push that donate button on our website or in the e-newsletter. I just give great thanks for the abundance and generosity of the hearts of our community that keep this center going in this very interesting time. And I know that the divine flow of abundance moves through everyone. And so now we'll just take a moment. And so I just know in this time and place that everyone's gifts, everyone's life is filled with the divine flow of the infinite, that abundance and prosperity abound, that all needs are met, that all of the wonder and joy that comes with the gifts that we so graciously receive come from that pure place of spirit within each heart as it gives without limits, knowing that we give freely from divine purpose, always abundantly prospered. And so I bless these gifts, these tithes. I know that they go forth in the world and they do good work right here for our community and for everything else that we touch as we move forward with our abundance and prosperity. And I just give thanks. And so it is. Thank you. Alrighty, Teresia, let's have our song. Thank you, Treasure. Thank you, Dave. Thanks to everyone who helps us put this on every week. Um, there's just a few of us here, but we love you so much that we have to keep sending these messages to you every week and know that we are always connected and we are one. So right now, as is our custom, repeat after me. Something wonderful is happening. Something wonderful is happening. It is this thing called life. It is this thing called life. Life is in my body. Life is in my body. Life is in my mind. Life is in my mind. Life is in the body of my affairs. Life is in the body of my affairs. I think it. I think it. I feel it. I feel it. I love it. I love it. Just the way that it is. Just the way that it is. And just the way that it is not. Just the way that it is not. Thank you, life. Thank you, life. Have a wonderful fire in the belly week, you guys. Mm -hmm.